Welcome to April's Ask Julie Anything. Today I'm here with Julianne Lee, our founder and formulator at Adored Beast Apothecary. And this session is going to be extra special because we're talking all about allergies. Uh, Julie, you mentioned in your email that we've had a lot of inquiries lately about allergies and tis the season when spring kind of hits. It sure is. It's in that, it's in that dicey spot where things are starting to pollinate and it depends on what province and state and stuff that you live in, but it's also can be quite wet in certain places. So you've got like molds and all kinds of stuff to, that contributes even more so to it. And, you know, everybody's going out more and well, hopefully going out more and um, uh, yeah, they're just becoming more uh, uh, engaged in all the different things that, that, that they could be allergic to or sensitive to or reactive to. We have to be really careful with, you know, we use the word allergies as a, as a sort of a broad, really broad statement. Um, most of the time, it's, it's more of a reactivity or a, a sensitivity. Mm -hmm. I know I'm, I'm sure suffering myself and, and our animals are too. Um, yeah. A couple of housekeeping keeping items before we get started. If you wouldn't mind in the chat. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, if you wouldn't mind in the chat, please change your, um, your, your, put your chat to all panelists and attendees <laughs> we all got we both got sort of like side wiped by andrea <laughs> ring being on here it's like oh, oh yeah i'm blushing and <laughs> um tonight we're going to take q a only about allergies if you can please just put your allergy questions so we can stick to one topic and help as many animals as possible without further ado shall we get started yeah we can do we have any do we have questions already or oh yeah we do for okay. sure um so sandra says oh you know what sandra i'm gonna give you the mic why don't oh, we start with that yeah, if yeah. you feel comfortable i'll give you permission you to talk and you can talk ask your question about something sandra hold on where is reverse me i i am muted does that work yeah uh, we can hear you yeah okay no video right uh this is webinar she can no. You can put your video on. Mm, I don't I, think so. No, I'm sorry. I don't think so. I don't think I have oh. an option. But okay. that's good. I can ask my question. I have two. Since you mentioned allergies, I think all my questions are related to allergies. Hi, okay. Julie. Thank Hi. you so much for this. I'm joining from San Francisco with my Chihuahua Monchi. Oh, I wish I could see him. Yeah. <laughs> and um, my question is uh, two things. I used to use tea tree oil uh, for skin uh, rashes. Uh, every time like she has a wound or if she just have rashes due to allergies and I used to work well but the last time I visit my acupuncturist uh, it was mentioned that there's side effects to tea tree oil and maybe I should stop using it but now I don't know what to use instead because uh, like humans we use alcohol or hydroperoxide but I know that that's not ideal for the dog skin mm -hmm. so I wonder if there's a better alternative and the other question is for the eye uh, every time we come back from walks, one of rice is very red and I already checked with the veterinarian and there was nothing wrong with her eyes. So the veterinarian said it might be allergies. So to continue monitoring, I'm not sure again, if there's something you recommend for, for that when it's the eye. So, and what, it, what her skin gets funny that that's what you use the tea tree oil on? Yeah, every time, like um, her, especially her toes, uh, that's, she, I see her licking constantly her toes and then she gets it all red mm -hmm. if I don't stop her or, and usually the tea tree will stop it. Like I think it is the mm -hmm. itchy sensation and that help. And, and sometimes um, if it increased or if it had like hot spots on her skin, I used to use the tea tree oil before and I felt like it worked. Um, but now I'm, I haven't used it in a while and I wonder what can I use instead to clean up wounds naturally? Um, well, there's lots of different things. Witch hazel can be, can like a dilute witch hazel, um, really, really dilute apple cider vinegar can work, uh, colloidal silver 
Adored Beast has a product called Owies and Oopsies or uh, Yeasty Beast. Uh, it's a spray on that has golden seal and um, lots of different herbs that have soothing properties plus disinfecting properties. And the Yeasty Beast actually um, has disinfecting properties plus it deals with yeast. So how do you spell it? Well, yeasty beast is spelled Y E A S T Y and then beast B E A S T. And it's a topical spray. And then we have owies and oopsies, like ouch and oops. And these are from Adore Beast? It is, yes. Okay, but that, that's going to be easier to find. <laughs> okay. But what I wanted to say is that, the, and you know, with eyes, if you can get a really, really reputable company that has colloidal silver in a spray, Colloidal silver seems to be quite inert with eyes. Like if eyes are, are infected or, or irritated, um, if you can find euphrasia eye drops, uh, that's really amazing for eyes. And it used to be able to get a really incredible euphrasia um, uh, homeopathic eye drop, but they, they stopped making it. But if you can get uh, go to the health food store and get a euphrasia eye drops or euphrasia eye spray, that's really, really good as well. Or you can get green tea and chamomile tea and you can brew it up. You'd have to do it every two days or else it could, it could actually get bacteria. You have to put it in the fridge and you can just pat her eye with a, with a cotton cloth or a cotton pad uh, with that tea that, that can help as well. But I think that if, if she's doing that, you really need to look at the, the bigger issue of why she even has it, right? Like, why does she have an allergy or why does she have a reactivity? Um, and I would be looking at gut health all, all the way through that. So, you know, it's gut health, um, uh, liver, liver support because liver is responsible for the histamine effects in the body. So we know that histamine is a, is a big contributor to allergies and sensitivities. So when you are making sure that the liver, gallbladder and kidneys are functioning correctly, it really helps to alleviate the, the, some of the symptoms of, of reactivities and allergies and, and gut health, right? Like making sure that, that your, your dog doesn't have um, any symptoms of leaky gut because when an animal has leaky gut or when an animal has gut trauma, what happens even if she's outside and she's walking through, let's say, I don't know, I'm just going to use pollen, right? Because poll there's pollen in certain provinces out and states out now. So if she's reactive to pollen, it means that she's inhaling it. And even when she's inhaling it or it's touching her, that it's it's somehow getting into the bloodstream, and sometimes that can happen through through um, uh, the mucosal membranes and in inhaling, but also it can happen. It can go through the skin. It can get into the bloodstream, and it can leak through the mucosal lining of the gut and and cause a reactivity. And that happens a lot. So it's not necessarily just what they ingest, it's also what's on topically, which brings me to another thing that I would say to you is when she comes in from outside, it's a good idea if it's really her feet, you can rinse her feet with some tea, either green yes. tea or, or whatever. But then what's really awesome is if you take a kefir or yogurt and you um, add uh, you know, some love bugs or one of our phytos flora, one of our, or a, a, any kind of probiotic that has a minimum of a 10 strain bacteria in it. And you mix it like a mask and you put it, rub it into their feet, rub it right in between oh, their toes okay. and rub it on their feet. And then you have to give them a bone or something to keep them away from their feet. But using topical probiotics can really, really, really help with um, uh, getting the defense mechanism of the skin uh, the same way the micro the microbiota of the skin needs to be especially with environmental allergies it needs yes. to be just as uh, strong as the gut as the gut microbiota 
Thank you so much. That's, that's wonderful. And I do believe that everything starts with the stomach and what we yeah. eat and the gut, because the same for humans. So I have yeah. a follow up question. That's okay, because I started her with I have a, a food delivery service for dogs. Oh, that's what yeah. she's been getting. Um, but I know that it's not necessarily organic, it's human grade. That's how. Uh, they advertise it and it's, it looks fresh and it's really good every month they send me this uh, food whether it's chicken <laughs> turkey or pork and so on but um, I wonder if it's better that I start cooking it I'm not the best cook or chef but if there is what would be uh, a good source to things that maybe I should avoid for leaky gut or what type of foods I can prepare for my chihuahua that um, maybe I can make a big bowl once a month and then spread it around uh, every day. Yeah, yeah that well, supports her uh, her gut uh, health. That that's for anyone that's watching too that has um, protein sensitivities or dogs with sensitivities with food. I always like to do one food at a time, and like I'm a big one for rotation. But if you, if you do, and once you know what is not reactive, then you can rotate like, you know, every couple of days or one day, you know, pork, the next day beef, the next day turkey, the next day fish. That's, that's fine. But in, if you have a reactive dog uh, or cat, then you need to keep them on one single novel source protein for probably a month just to see if we, if you actually do have a sensitivity to that protein, Beca because if you're rotating them too much, then you're not going to really know which one they're sensitive to and which one they're not sensitive to. Mm. So it's, it's a nice idea to, especially these really, really reactive dogs, like dogs that are, that are just so sensitive to foods. It's a, it's a good idea to, to try and find a novel protein that they've never that they've never had. And what that does is then you can still treat their leaky guts or the, you can deal with their microbiome, skin and gut, but you at least give the body, if they're on something for about a month, three weeks to a month, you give the body a, a sort of a resolve, a little bit of a break from the reactivity, right? So, so mm -hmm. that it can start to heal, the skin can start to heal without it becoming hypersensitive. So if you're going to make your own, I would try doing it with, you know, one protein for maybe three weeks, see how her skin is, see what her feet are like, um, and then go on to a different one, see, see that. And just, you know, journal, journal, journal. I always tell everyone that, that their animals, each animal should have their own, their own journal so that you can write in sort of times of day that they're itchier, um, you know, oh, I went to this dog park and when we came back, wow, my dog didn't itch at all. But then I went to this other dog park and he came home and it was like, I couldn't keep him from shaking his head and scratching his feet and rubbing his bum. And it's like, okay, well, what's at that dog park that isn't at the other dog park? And sometimes that narrows it down. Like maybe it could be like a thuya tree or a pine tree or a particular thing that they're walking on. Um, or even just knowing I can't take my dog to that park until this particular tree goes into um, leaf or whatever. It can, it, can, it can help tremendously by just marking things down and then going back in, you know, every week to two weeks and go, oh, wow, there's a pattern. You know, it seems like mm -hmm. he's worse every Thursday or every right. Thursday, Friday or every Monday, Tuesday, it's like, okay, yeah, worse every Monday, Tuesday, because every Saturday and Sunday, we go to this farther away park or something. It's, right. It's so helpful. That's, that's wonderful. And I already use the, the gut health from Adorbees. Okay. But I haven't bought a probiotic yet. So those would be, and I usually mix those in her food right before okay. serving. I don't yeah. cook. Uh, it's, it's meant to do after it's, right when it's ready to be eaten, right? Yeah. Not during cooking. Okay. No. Wonderful. Thank you so much. This You're is welcome. Wonderful. Appreciate it. Thanks, Sandra. Thank you. Okay, Julie, uh, Millie wrote in, she has a, she's been on the relief protocol. 
So she's been on the relief protocol for three months. It's yeah. a Westy rescue. He's improved a lot. All his hot spots except one have healed. His hair has grown back. Um, she's incorporating kangaroo raw into his meals, half kangaroo, half rabbit. She's noticed that he's starting to shake his head a lot in the last week. Um, and there is a bad smell. She tried to clean it, got some gunk out. She's afraid maybe that he's starting to regress. This so little I don't Westie. know if you can ask her, but when did she start to add the yep. rabbit? Let me see. Millie, are you still here? I'm going to give you the mic. Yes. Can you hear me? All yours. Yeah. So, hi. Yep. Hi. Thanks for the echo. Um, this has been the best like result that I've seen on my Westies like in the last, I would say, two and a half years. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he's grown his fur back. Um, there's only just one little spot that uh, it kind of healed already. Just uh, um, just need the fur to grow back. Um, yeah. But like I said, it's just, uh, I've started seeing him like shake his head a lot, noticing he's been like rubbing his ears on the floor. Mm -hmm. um, so he's been on rabbit since last year, late last year. Um, right. But when I uh, asked the question, I think it was January when I joined, um, you mentioned also about rotation and I was also thinking at that time that I should kind of change a little bit. So I got the kangaroo to uh, mix with the rabbit. Rabbit, so okay. He started kangaroo in late, uh, late February. So late February, yeah, so. And he's just starting now? Yeah, this just last week, just last week. He was so good and I was like so happy and he just got groomed and everything was nice. And even the groomer was like, yeah, he's so good. Like, um, and uh, yeah, he just started shaking. Uh, okay, and so so how, how much after the grooming did he started shaking? Um, he got groomed a couple of weeks back, I would mm -hmm. say. Um, so a couple things um, that could literally be the shampoo that they used, the groomer used. Hmm. As remember when I was talking about like the skin microbiome, mm -hmm. the skin microbiome is, is, is like using a shampoo on the skin is almost like giving your dog an antibiotic for their gut. So when you use a shampoo, it strips the, all of the bacteria, the, the, the friendly bacteria mm -hmm. off of their skin and makes them more susceptible oh. and I don't know like does she clean his ears um does she pluck the hair out of his ears often Westies get their ears plucked. yeah I think she did because he was so overgrown because of all the closure here in Canada and yeah he was supposed to be groomed in um mid uh February but okay. yeah, it all got moved so Millie I would almost guarantee you it's kind of coming from the grooming because, oh. because what happens is when you, when you pluck those, those hairs out of his ears, mm -hmm. um, you inflame the, the tissue in the ear, right? Mm. So then when the tissue gets inflamed, especially, especially dogs that are susceptible to yeast, mm -hmm. because That's yeast <laughs> thrives mm -hmm. in conditions where there's not a lot of oxygen. So, so then what happens is you pluck the ears mm -hmm. and then the skin in the ears swells up mm -hmm. and then the ear canal becomes very tight. Oh. So when it becomes tight, the, the, um, the bacteria and the yeast just really, really thrive because there's no oxygen getting down there. So I would, I would be pretty sure that that, that, I mean, I can't say 100% that that's what's happening, but I would say that that's probably what's happening. Um, next time you go to the groomer, you should ask her not to pluck his ears. Oh. I would, I would, I, would, I never, ever, ever, I ask all of my patients to never have their ears plucked. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, an, it's unnatural. Dogs are supposed to, I mean, dogs have hair in their ears for reasons. Um, some, there's a lot of people that believe that you have to get the hair out of there if they have a, you know, a tendency to get infection or, or, um, or yeast, but it's not, I, you know, sometimes I've seen it work, but I would say 1% of the time, most of the time it, it, 
it causes a really severe reactive process. Mm -hmm. um, and so will the shampoo. So the next time you take it, tell her not to wash your, his ears and don't pluck them. Mm -hmm. And if there's, if she needs to bathe him, the only thing that I would recommend is like a Castile soap. Uh, so you can purchase your own soap, take it to the, take it to the groomer. I don't ever think dogs should be used soap on the dog, even Castile. I don't, unless they've rolled in something so horrific that you just are going to barf if you get near them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and if you need to get them trimmed, then you could ask her to either use the Castile soap or you can um, uh, not use soap and just use water and just rinse them with water. But if you do even use a Castile soap, you could, I would do our um, Adored Beast uh, topical mask, uh, probiotic mask. And that's what I would do with them now. I would, I would put them in the bathtub. I would rinse them off. I would get some chamomile tea and some green tea and, and steep it, make it warm. And then I would rinse them with that warm tea, let it, let like, take it all off and then on the maybe Steph can you stick the recipe in the chat absolutely and then you can take the recipe from the chat and then I would do that topical for him and if his ears are really bad there I hope I don't know I know it, it, it's so hard I'm having a very hard time finding it right now there's a really 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 good ear product called Zymox and it comes, it comes with, um, Zymox without, uh, without cortisone. Yeah. Yeah. It's so difficult to find. I can't. Now find it's it really Canada. hard to find. It sucks. It's just yeah. terrible. You can, I have one. I have one that I bought in the U S before, but now we can't cross the border. Yeah. <laughs> so I think there, I can't remember. Um, uh, there was a company that I saw carried. I mean, Amazon doesn't have it anymore. Yeah. It's really, really Chewy sells it or Judy Morgan. Can we get Chewy it from? It, but they don't ship to Canada. I, I wonder. If, I wonder if Judy Morgan's. Judy Morgan. Uh, Doctor Judy Morgan. Um, maybe her store sends it. Would send it to Canada. Um, mm -hmm. but it's good. It's really, really good. It's amazing. I used it at our our clinic for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. So I would do that. Um. And, and be really careful next, like, it's not your fault. I mean, it's just sort of typical. Everybody thinks that that's what they should be doing, but it, it really, um, it really can play havoc on their skin, getting them groomed. And especially if they use a blow dryer, because then it dries their skin out mm. and then they get itchy and then they start mm. to itch and then they get a secondary bacterial infection because they've been itching and it kind of, it kind of recycles it again. So don't freak out. I don't think it's his gut microbiome. <laughs> yeah, I think, kind of I think it's, <laughs> no, no, don't stay the course and really, really try and rebuild his, his skin microbiome mm -hmm. and try to get some Zymox for his ear. Oh, you know what you could do? Go and get some, um, try to get our, uh, it's called our go-to. Oh yeah. I have go-to. I got, have, go give it to him. Just give it to him. Give it to him three times a day for like three days. Uh, that's oral, right? Yeah. Okay. Virginia. Yeah, because if they're if it if the ear canal is still inflamed from plucking, mm -hmm. the the your go to will help to calm that down. Oh yeah, yeah. I bought it ahead of time when we were talking about it. I was like, okay, maybe I would need it one day. <laughs> so oh, it. you need it now, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but for the rest, should I continue with the uh, two weeks DSTBs, two weeks phytos? Just flora? stay on the protocol. I don't think it was broken. I think it was probably from getting him groomed. Okay. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, Thanks, Millie. He, oh. Sorry. Um, yeah, he's, he's also been like, I mean, he's 13 this year. So he's been, uh, I realized like a couple of months, he's been drinking more water than normal. He, when I first got him, he, I got him at eight years old already as a rescue. So um, he doesn't like water, but um, when I got all his teeth taken out like uh, last, uh, last year, March, 
um, I think that's when I see that he has more interest in water. But like mm -hmm. recently, last two months, he's been drinking more water, peeing more. I don't know if it's just mm -hmm. because of age. He should probably get his blood work done. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm due for blood kid, work. Yeah. You're doing, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. but the pro yeah, the protein is okay. I should continue with the kangaroo, right? I wouldn't change anything. I would okay. get his blood work done and try to deal with his his skin for sure. Okay. Awesome. Okay. okay. Cool. All right. Thank you so much, Julie. You're welcome. All right, Julie. Next is Carissa. Allergies are terrible. Okay, Chris, I'm going to give you the mic here and I'll read your question to Julie really quick. She feels like she's tried everything. She's got a nine pound Brussels Griffin. He's turning nine this year. The past two years, his allergies are terrible. I'm lucky enough to live near Dr. Jean Dodds. We did the environmental test and we know somewhat of what he's allergic to outside. I did food elimination. I'm pretty confident that it isn't food. I use colloidal silver and coconut oil and manuka oil. It helped a ton, but it's not working anymore. I wash them with Jack's and Daisy and it's helped, but I must be missing something. I did a vinegar rinse at the end. I'd like to know how many times a week to use vinegar. Help. Carissa, do you have the mic? I don't know if you can hear me. I'm on a computer, not a headset. Yes? yes. <laughs> so I know that was a lot to go on, but I've been treating it for about two years. I like to consider myself fairly holistic and knowledgeable because I researched my previous dog passed of cancer. And since then I've researched for about seven years of how to eliminate all toxins everywhere. So he's allergic to everything under the sun outside, all grass, most trees. I mean, right now it's terrible with the yeah. wind. I'm, I'm in the desert right now. So it's the, the it's terrible, but yeah. I mean, I feel like I've, I have him on kefir milk. I do raw goat's milk. I cook my own food. Um, I've tried like salmon, white fish. He seemed to not react well. So I went back to Turkey. He seemed to do better. I've got to be missing something. What are you doing for his, for his gut? So he's on probiotics. Um, I don't have them. I don't remember the name, but it's a, they're very expensive. And the office, Dr. Jeans gave them to me from there. I forget the name of them. Um, so he has those. I do turmeric, um, and then I always start like with either raw goat's milk or kefir milk. And then every couple of months I'll detox him for two days on bones broth. He hates it, but I force it <laughs> and then kind of reset and start over, um, which I'm going to do again in the next couple of days. But what are his symptoms? I, he, so he started losing his hair on his back um, about a year ago. And I've, I've been able to treat it where it would grow back and then he loses it again, grows back. He's, it's just, you know, licked his feet for about, oh, probably three or four years. I feel like I've kind of gotten feet under control, but now the tail and there's two big patches on his back where he's lost the hair and he itches constantly. And obviously, and that. obviously Jean's done like all kinds of blood work on him and stuff, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, <laughs> for me, for me, it's, you would, like, I would just start him on, on the leaky gut protocol. Uh, Which one? Leaky gut protocol? The leaky, leaky gut protocol. And he okay. need, need that relief protocol. Okay. Um, because if we don't know, I have a thing called a relief protocol where it's, it's virtually impossible to know whether it's, it's a, it's yeast or it's, allergies or it's it like it, it it's for dogs that are just all over the map like just like that lady said she's been trying to deal with her dog for two and a half years right like yeah really, and um it's a it's a it's a what the reason that I came up with that is because it's for dogs that are extra sensitive and extra um um you know allergic to everything pretty much like all the grasses like environmental the whole nine yards your 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 skin is your first mode of defense right like it's our first detoxification organ whether you're a dog a horse a kangaroo it doesn't really matter um your skin is what 
your your body uses as its first mode of defense against anything, especially like chemicals and Roundup and and you know pol air pollution and um, pollen and this this it hits the skin and it the skin tries to detoxify it. So when it enters into the body, it will go into the in it will then go through um, the next process, like any kind of chemicals that you're, you're, you're around, a lot is detoxed from then from the gut skin and then from the gut. So if, if he's that sensitive, we're going to probably be in a situation where we're not sure what's, what really is doing what. So I really like to not overwhelm the body leaky gut like I honestly believe I mean I, I I worked with with Gene Dodds and Rodney Habib with his dog and nobody knew what was going on this was years ago this was before leaky I even had the leaky gut protocol I was just putting all the products together and um it it she was the same way and it it really really it's it's just if you don't look at the core issue if you really can't get down into the core issue of what's causing all of these react reactivities, then it's very hard to alleviate them. And when they're that reactive, then what I usually do is I do a two weeks of leaky gut. And then is it Stephanie, is it two weeks of, of um, yeasty beets next? Or I think it's two weeks of Phytos flora. Right? I, I believe and, so. I know it's a rotation you, of the three. Did you put it in the chat? I didn't put it in the chat, but you can find it on our community or send me an email because I can get it from Kaylin, the product specialist. Okay. okay. I'm, so I do you like a three week or a, a every two I, week I, rotation of them? Yeah, I do. I mm -hmm. do two weeks of leaky gut. Then I do two weeks of Phytos flora. Then I do two weeks of yeasty beast. Then I do another two weeks actually of Phytos flora. And then I go back to leaky gut. So I do Phytos flora in between the two. And the reason I do that is because of the fulvic and humic acid. It has a, it has a chelation therapy. So if stuff is dying, so if the yeast is dying and, and there's a, there's like a to there's toxins from the yeast, the death of the yeast, then the chelation therapy helps to pull all of those toxins out. And then for the leaky gut protocol, we're really boosting the immune system, right? We're boosting up the system. We're getting the bodies, um, uh, we're, we're, we're helping the body's defense mechanism to work correctly and homeostasis to happen. And when that happens, sometimes um, there, is a, there is a sort of kickstart of, of, of the immune system and then, and then the body will start to de detox. So okay. when you do it in between, then the fulvic and humic acid really, really helps to chelate. And then you're adding, you know, you know, like 80 different soil minerals to their, to their body that will help with cell regeneration and, and all of that stuff. So I would really, I would really do that with your dog. And, um, as far as, um, topical stuff, I, again, I wouldn't use anything topical other than teas and kefirs and um, putting a probiotic, like a really, really high potency probiotic. Because probiotics are great, but probiotics are not going to heal and in, in help to, um, um, it's not going to heal the mucosal junctions of the gut, right? It's just going to, it's just going to put in more probiotics and, and more bacteria. And sometimes the problem with that is that if you're using a probiotic that's got less than 10 strains in it, you're over colonizing really important bacteria, even friendly bacteria. So, so too many good bacteria will actually over colonize other good bacteria. And then you can unbalance the ecosystem in the gut, even by using probiotics. And if you're not so you using say a, use it, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt okay. you. It's okay. When you say use it topically, what do you do? Do you mix it with like a water? Do you mix yeah, I, it? I, Stephanie put it in the chat. We have a, oh. we have a, a recipe. It's almost like a mask and you're, you're using either phytosflora or love bugs because we, we, that's the two that we recommend. 
um, and you're mixing it with either kefir or a yogurt and you're okay. massaging it like you rinse their you rinse everything off their body first with with tea with a, with some type of a tea and then and then you add the kefir mixed with the the probiotics and you let it sit as long as you can you know 15 20 minutes and then what you rinse it off with water and then you do an, a last wash of chamomile or or green tea okay Cause yeah, he's a, he has, what do you call it? Dermatitis. Is that what it is? Yeah. And then he's allergic to his dermatitis. So yeah. it's like a never ending cycle of <laughs> allergies. Well, you know what? It, that's interesting because it, to me, it, it's not, it, it sounds like he's got like some major immune mediated stuff, right? Like autoimmune stuff. Because Maybe. The minute you're like, it's the same with, ca- with cats and dogs that are allergic to the plaque of their teeth um you know their body is is for whatever reason been triggered into an autoimmune crisis where they 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 look at their own something in their own bodies as an enemy and then they create an allergy to something that their own body produces that often happens with vaccines that's that's probably the number one time it happens Again, I try to be as holistic as possible. I won't get into that whole conversation, but they're pretty toxic free, I'll say in their body, as far as everything I put in them. Um, But that is so interesting that you said the plaque thing. The one thing that I neglect is their teeth. And I'm wondering if that's the stem of it. That completely could be the trigger. It's not the stem. No. No. Okay. It's not the stem of it, but it'll contribute to it. Okay, for well, sure. Maybe I'll start there too. <laughs> but but don't forget too, like saliva should be should have the natural bacteria that keep teeth clean, especially if especially if you're using um, a species oriented food. Their yeah. their saliva should produce the correct bacteria to keep plaque and tartar off their teeth. Okay, and that's what it's supposed to be for. So. You can put probiotics in their water so that when they're drinking their water, it, it's it's coating their teeth. You can brush them with um, with 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 probiotics. Okay. And and but but I, I I know you're hearing me say probiotics a lot, but it's it's ultimately so important to be sure that you're using a pre a really good prebiotic with your probiotic, or again, you're going to okay. cause more harm than good by giving a probiotic. I've seen dogs go on just a really good quality, expensive probiotic and have flare up just, just for good health. And then all of a sudden get sick because you're overpopulating transient bacteria, And then the, the, the native bacteria that are in there that from birth, um, don't have anything to eat because the transient bacteria are ingesting all the food. The native bacteria still has to eat. So it winds up eating its own gut lining. Um, Probiotics is something that I get really excited that, that it's, it's, it's like really well known now. The problem is that now that, that probiotics are really well known, it's so trendy and it's such a huge industry that we're compartmentalizing it and we're actually causing more harm than good with probiotics now, which is, it, it's so sad. It just happens. It's, it's the world of industrialization, right? Same with there's, there's something to fish oil, but because we're using right. so much of it, we're, we're causing harm even, even by feeding it because it's so rendered and it's so, you know, we're just, we're just not looking at the big picture. So probiotics is a, is a gut health is a is more than probiotics gut health is is creating a diverse ecosystem that that you can feed the best food in the world but if you don't have the proper bacteria in your gut your gut your your body can't even produce vitamins right so the bacteria is what causes the postbiotic effect which is the vitamin within the food that you're eating. So if you don't have, uh, if you don't have the correct 
bacteria in the gut and you're eating all of this fresh food and this really amazing, great food, the, the, the result can be, you know, very minimum of eating amazing food if you don't have the proper bacteria to take, to process that food into vitamins. Okay. That's really helpful. Of those three, which one contains the prebiotic? All of them. I won't make it. Okay. So with those three, I'm set. Pardon? With those three that you recommended, that contains all the prebiotic and probiotics that I would need. Yeah. Okay. Done. Yeah. Uh, Carissa, I sent you the relief protocol. I also put it in the chat, but I sent it to you on a private message. So awesome. you're, you're ready to roll. Thank you. Thank you and, so and much. And the other thing that's making me excited to find out how your dog does is because our, our Phytos flora contains the two strains of canine, which is really right now the only one that I know of in the world that, that has that. And the only one that I know of that has the research that we've done on those two canine strains. And the exciting part of that is it has an immune modulating effect. So for all you guys out there right now that are on, you know, prednisone and um, atopica and venectal P, what that is, is that's a steroid and steroids suppress the immune system because the most allergies are autoimmune, which means that the immune system is too high. So you don't really want to be ramping up their immune system, especially when they're on steroids. Um, but, you know, suppressing the immune system is equally as harmful. It, it removes the immediacy of the symptoms, but it doesn't deal with the problem. And in fact, what it does is it suppresses it. So then it, when they come off of it, they have a rebound effect. So the Phytos flora has two particular species of bacteria in it. That are, that's made from canine feces um, that has an immune modulating effect, which means that naturally if the immune system goes too high into an autoimmune crisis, it helps to bring it down. And then if it goes too low, where then you may get secondary staphylococcus or se secondary bacterial infections, it brings it up. So it actually modulates the immune system. And I think that that's why a lot of um, our customers and a lot of the dogs that are on, on Phytos Flora in this rescue thing that I've put together, it's that really great balance of the leaky gut actually helping to um, uh, uh, mend that, that, those leaky junctions, but then we move into a detoxification and immune modulation effect. And then we look at yeast and then we look at, so the, the, bo the body's not overwhelmed with one thing. It's actually synergistically being supported through a process of, of most of the time, auto, an autoimmune crisis. Very helpful. Yeah, totally. Thanks, Julie. <laughs> You're welcome. Good luck. Thank keep you. Us, keep us posted, please. I will. I love, I love, your, breed, I love your breed of dog. Oh, I just, thank I just, you. I, I just love One of three of my dogs. Why are we? All right. Um, Julie, there's a question here from Laureen. Let me find you, Laureen. So she, her dog is eating dirt. She's tried love bugs. Um, and she's also tried another blend. Laureen, is your mic on? I don't know. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you now. Okay. Uh, did you say yes, you can hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, okay. So mostly I've noticed it. She does it. She starts eating dirt in the fall. Um, and obviously I'm in Minnesota, so obviously she can't do it in the winter when there's snow on the ground, but mm -hmm. she's also still been eating dirt this spring too. No, it's not a lot. And she stops when I holler at her because I'm not sure that she should be. Um, I've been studying leaky gut and all of the, and the microbiome for several years now. Great. And I keep finding more and more things to learn, but, um, and I have tried treating her for leaky gut, but I have not used your whole protocol. Mm -hmm. um, 
I've used some other things. One of the main things that I use is Slippery Elm. Yeah. And I believe in most respects, she's quite healthy. Um, oh, she is almost 10 years old now. Mm. <clears throat> and, um, but I just can't figure out the whole dirt eating. I mean, she eats horse poop too, but you know, that seems to be a delicacy. Yeah. Um, horse I don't know if that's normal. related. What? Horse poop is pretty normal. I don't yeah, know. I kind of won't eat horse poop. I, kind of figured that but the dirt mm -hmm. stuff I wasn't too sure about and the odd thing is because she does it the only time I ever notice it I should say is in the fall usually late in the fall like you know September October mm -hmm. Hmm. well I mean there's lots of reasons that they eat dirt I mean it, it and there's nothing wrong with them eating dirt if you know that it's really good dirt like dirt is amazing it's very very uh, supportive and healing for the gut and it's it's great but you know that would be like dirt from an organic farm that we know hasn't had any kind of chemicals on it and and things like that um but usually when they're eating dirt it's a couple things either they're either they're they're getting sort of like a gastritis that's one thing um, sometimes they're lacking in minerals, which is uh, a, a, a big one. Um, well, she is on phytosynergy. Okay. Yeah. She, get, she gets that every day. Okay. Um, and in the, like the fact that she's eating it in the fall, that's, that's, that's interesting. Unless she has some kinds of sensitivity to like leaf mold or something to do with the fall where she's getting kind of a sort of an acid reflux or or whatever that she's that she's trying to get to the dirt or she's you know she's missing an enzyme uh, well I, right I, now I, I did switch her over to a soil-based probiotic um yeah. i have used your healthy gut i think yeah. that was two probiotics before i used yeah. that and then i used the love bugs <clears throat> and now i've got her on oh um no, that was probably a while ago. Then I had her on the, I have her on the soil based one now, but the one just before that I had her on one with the digestive enzymes because I thought maybe she was lacking in enzymes. Enzymes, yeah. Um, so none of them seem to have actually addressed that issue. Although I wanted to say that she doesn't do it as much, but I can't mm -hmm. swear to that. <laughs> well, I, you know, I don't, I don't really know what it would be. I mean, usually it is that they're that they're they're seeking something out. Doesn't mean that they're lacking anything. Sometimes, you know, mud is very very or soil is very very soothing to the gut, right? So, you know, like I said, an acid reflux or some something like that. If I don't know whether you change your food historically in the fall, she is. Um, I don't actually. She is on a raw diet. Um, and I change it frequently. I don't feed her the same stuff all the same time. All she the time. Mm -hmm. doesn't seem to have any particular and problems that I can tell. Blood the blood only blood thing blood. that I finally figured out recently, and this might be a shot in the dark, but um, is last late last fall, I suddenly realized that my my uh habit of bathing the horses in the fall and my dog mm -hmm. as late as i possibly can while it's still warm enough to do it outside yeah um was actually and the shampoo that i was using while i try to use decent stuff was yeah. not the correct thing to do because i did notice i finally started noticing and realizing my horses were more itchy my dog was a little more itchy i wouldn't say allergy exactly just yeah. itchier this was just a huge revelation to me. I didn't realize anything about the microbiome on the skin. Mm. That's why I said I'm constantly learning. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not going to be doing that anymore until I can get a hold of some Zymox or something different that or I can use. Castile soap or something like. Well, that. I don't bathe any of them actually very often at all, and rare. I only do my dog once a year, and it's usually, like I said, in the fall. Yeah. I don't know if that has anything to do with her dirt eating. That's does she eat the dirt around where it's been wet? No. Okay. Most of the time she eats the dirt out in the horse paddock. 
And, and it's definitely dirt, not just poop, because she digs, you know, she'll dig a little hole in if there. If it doesn't make it. her sick, like, I don't even no, know. No, not that I've ever a, seen. It's almost like I don't even see that there's a problem. I mean, <laughs> you know, you could do blood work. You could look at her. Um, you know, sometimes I do see them eat dirt when they're anemic. But then why would she just be anemic in the, in the fall? You know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, that's a shot in the dark. Yeah. You could always check her her red blood cell count when she's doing that just just as a as a a one-off you know um because i have seen that licking like licking cement eating dirt when when animals are anemic um but i don't know i mean i i i personally you could try the when you're finished your soil based one you could try the the uh phytos flora because okay. it has fulvic and humic acid in it right which is which is like a dirt yeah well so, that's what i'm feeding now oh I mean, that's, that's what, what you're giving her now okay yeah okay yeah I, i'm yeah. doing the one from uh from dana scott so okay um, dogs naturally and it's got fulvic and humic humic acid yeah okay yeah. yeah well i mean that that probably would be that would be probably helpful you know well, I thought just so. Since she likes dirt. I thought I'd just give her good dirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, yeah, she seems great in many, many other ways. And that's mm. why I'm like, yeah, maybe it's not a big deal, but I don't really I know. I wouldn't get stuff. hung up on it. I would I would probably, you could also do a Michael, you could send her poop off to um, Holly at, um, what's Holly's thing called, Steph? Um, animal Biome. Animal Biome. You could get her poop checked, you know, see if she's really lacking in something, like a particular okay. bacteria or something. Um, that would be another thing that you could try, do some blood work. And if everything comes back like half decent, I wouldn't worry too, too much about it. Okay. There's, there's a reason she's doing it. And if she doesn't throw up or get diarrhea or seem lethargic or sluggish, I, I, I really feel like animals do what they need to do. Yeah. Yeah, I was just hoping. I like to know why, so I was just hoping, hoping I um, could figure it out. But I don't know. I mean, maybe she knows that the winter's coming and she needs more particular minerals, or that she needs a certain kind maybe. of, you know, that she, there's something that she needs. Um, what breed is she? She's a Weimaraner. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why she would do it. If she did it all the time, I would say she's lacking in minerals and she needs a you know she's just getting her own minerals but the fact that she does it in the fall i don't know unless she's preparing <laughs> herself for the winter i mean that's a possibility she is slightly crazy though so, no. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, i get a lot of compliments by her she's like i said she's almost 10 years old now she's Aww. amazing she acts like she's two she looks like she's two People can't believe it when I tell them how old she is. Aww. And uh, it's all due, I got her as a rescue at age six. And it's all Aww. due to going holistic and a raw diet and the whole ball of wax. I, yeah, I am sure. so, so sold on it. Aww, it's amazing. Awesome. And by the way, I love your products and, and you. everything that you do is amazing. I love it. Thank Thanks. Keep up the much. good work. Wait till you see what we're coming out with. I am I've bugged you a bit before I've actually emailed you about horse stuff and well, I know you're coming out with some equine stuff yeah and probably I'm, in less than two weeks I stuff mm -hmm. yeah. But I, yeah. yeah I've been anxiously waiting to see what you're coming out with because yeah. I've been working very hard on my horses too and they are doing amazing amazing but it's been harder digging the information out for the horses but i just yeah. apply what i've learned and yeah and um they're pretty amazing <laughs> yeah it's all amazing i don't know why more people can't get on board with this yeah well it's just a matter of time yeah i work on people but i get a little bit obsessive so i have to try to <laughs> i have to try to dial it back a little because that turns people off <laughs> Yeah, I, <laughs> I thought I, you would. I understand. used I used to do, be like that at my clinic sometimes, and finally I had to be like, okay, well. Yeah, it's hard. Come around, I come around when it's their time. That's true. Plant the seed, right? Exactly. <laughs> well, thank you again. You're very welcome.
Okay, I'm going to move on to Tracy. Julie, Tracy's asking, how do you know if a cat has a yeast problem that contributes to allergies and itching? That's a tough one because cats yeah. don't usually have like the yeasty, smelly, um, uh, you know, exudate stuff like dogs do. Mm -hmm. But, um, uh, oh, there she is. Tracy, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay. Why do, so you think that your cat might have a yeast problem? Yes. Well, no, I don't know. Oh. Um, you ha on your site, you have a lot of information about dogs and you talked about how um, uh, doing leaky gut can sometimes uh, kill the yeast too quickly. quickly. And if that's the case, you do yeasty bees. So I, I uh, just didn't know if there was a way to identify it in cats. And is, is your... Um... So do you think your cat has an allergy or something? She itches, itches, itches. Um, it, um, it, she used to have terrible scabs and um, I got the, the feline immunity. Um, she's very particular about what she eats. eats yeah. um, so I'm just giving her tiny amounts of phytoplankton and tiny amounts of the feline immunity gut sooth thing. Okay. And, um, the scabs are gone. It's just fantastic. And that's just been three weeks, but okay. she's still itching. Then stay the course because the itching is going to stop. At the, it will be the last thing to stop. Ah. Right. I mean, if all of her scabs are gone and she's doing well on three weeks and just tiny amounts, just try and breathe and have patience you know, because it, it, it's going to take time, right? It's going to take yeah. a lot of time. Cats, in my experience, cats don't suffer from yeast as much as they suffer from, cats are so sensitive that my honest opinion is when cats have an allergy or a sensitivity, they, they are, they can almost go into an obsessive, like an emotionally obsessive compulsive um space right and i found where do you live um in um the united states in the south okay. um i mean i don't know whether your state allows it or not but if she's really really itchy and really obsessed too is is do the course with the with the phytosynergy and the and not phytosynergy yeah phytosynergy and um uh the feline gut sooth and I would look at maybe getting some CBD and just, ah. just make sure that it's, it's, you know, really, really, really good CBD. Um, I use, we use, um, I really like Ian uh, source CBD because I know for sure it has no THC in it. And uh, you, or you can just, just try and find organic um, uh, super, critical uh extraction it's called and uh and make sure that it's um uh like a whole plant like a full spectrum uh -huh. yeah. cbd and just start her off with just a couple of drops because that can really kind of take the edge off the the, the compulsiveness yeah so can so can actually the um like uh when I talk to everybody about the go-to, like if she gets, if she really gets um, herself in such a state, mm -hmm. then you can just um, give her a little bit of the, of the go-to. And okay. that sometimes will calm, calm the inflammation down, kind of take the stress out of it. They can, they can sometimes really benefit from that, but there's their cats are, their skin is so thin yeah when they when they just get you know their nails are so sharp they can just like do such damage so fast it's just awful i have a cat without really bad allergies and you know stress can sometimes you know trigger it and i wouldn't worry so much right now about yeast 
I, if, yeah. she, if she's doing well and she's getting that, that's, that's fast. Three weeks is, is actually really fast for a chronic problem, like a chronic disease. So I would just be happy that she's in that space, get some CBD, get some, um, um, some go-to mm -hmm. and, you know, try to support her when she's, when she's itchy and just keep going. Okay. Very helpful perspective. It makes sense. And thank you. Awesome. No, oh, you're very, very welcome. Thank you. I love talking about cats. I don't get to talk about them enough. <laughs> Thanks, Tracy. <laughs> um, Shelly's got a question. Julie, can you talk more about reverse sneezing? Yep. <laughs> I can. Um, re reverse sneezing is a huge sign of, of sensitivity, like huge, huge sign of, of reactivity and sensitivity or allergies or whatever. Um, there's, there's not a lot. I have a, I have a, um, a theory a little bit about it. I think it, I, I believe that it comes from sort of a post nasal drip that, that affects and chronic sort of chronically affects the trachea. And when, when the drip gets worse, the trachea goes into like a spasm and then they, they do this like reverse sneezing. And really, I think what it is, is the trachea is sort of going into a spasmodic situ situation. Um, is, is your dog doing that a lot? No, it's really, really periodic. He's um, got a lot of other things going on with him too. He doesn't scratch a lot. He did for a while and I uh, give him colostrum. I'm okay. also um, getting him going on the Fido and he's been on the, um, the gut stuff on and okay. off him. Yeah. And he's on a raw diet, but he's got some really nasty is issues with his eyes. So I'm wondering um, the case KCS and also um, oh. I had an animal communicator talk to him. I'm one as well, but when you work I mean, to work with your own animals, it's very difficult. It's impossible almost. Yeah, yeah it's um, he feels gravelly in his eyes. Gravelly. Yeah. What breed is he? He's a, a Jack Russell. And he's not even four. Not even four. God. Poor little guy runs around with his eyes shut half the time. Oh. Yeah. And has he been diagnosed with it? Yeah, with KCS. Yeah. He has. And then now, um, about a year and a half ago, his left eye turned blue. And just three weeks ago, his right eye started to turn blue. Mm -hmm. I've had him to three specialists and nobody knows. So I'm, I've got him booked in to go to a natural platform path in the city which is about four hours away. a vet a vet yeah a okay good yeah but i'm just you know i'm i'm trying everything so, so what who is it what what vet are you going to see oh i don't know the name yet i haven't got it booked because i'm just telling her what's going on and there there's four or five vets it's in edmonton alberta oh in edmonton okay yeah 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 okay. um i can maybe look at the name of the uh, practice, it's called Holistic Veterinary Clinic in Edmonton. Hmm. I wonder who that is. The um, vets are Dr. Jennifer Marshall, Dr. Gina McLachlan, and Dr. Lex Barty View or something, and Dr. Charlene Knapp Miller. But if you know somebody else that's better, I'm, I haven't booked yet. Yeah, no, I mean, you should definitely go, he should definitely go get seen and hopefully they're going to, I mean, hopefully they'll look at sort of an autoimmune perspective with him as well. Yeah. He's um, had a couple of traumas in his life too. So maybe. yeah, um, yeah actually maybe. two exactly. months ago, he got beat up by a dog and, and I'm oh. wondering if that was what caused this right eye to start? Well, you know what? I, I don't know whether she's still on here and she's going to kill me because I don't even know if she's taking any more patients. But um, <laughs> one of my, one of my best, well, my best friend and to me, the best animal homeopath mm -hmm. probably in the world. And she's, she's, um, she does phone consultations. Okay. And I definitely, definitely would look at if he's had a couple of traumas and he's, 
I mean, Casey, yes, you've got to probably get some, some stuff in his eyes. Yeah, I give him shots, the TAC twice a day for that. Absolutely. What'd you give him? The TAC, TAC of Lemus or whatever it's called. Twice okay, yeah. okay, so you are putting stuff in his eyes. Yeah, so and I've tried actually the, um, um, you, you talked about it earlier, silver. Silver. Oh, the colloidal silver. Colloidal silver. Yeah, silver. it's structured like, water from Dr. Uh, he's in Vancouver too. Or, okay, he's not a vet, but I called him. Yeah. Well, can, I, can I interrupt? Yeah. Can I interrupt? Sarah, Sarah just sent me a note and she has a, a suggestion. Can I put Sarah on the mic? Yeah. Sarah, are you there? Can I put two people on yeah. the mic? She just, she's, she's muted. Yeah. Sarah, are you still hanging out? She can't talk because I can see that her her mic mic is muted. Shoot! Oh, here she, she is. might mic. have to. She might here have she, to unmute herself. She says, uh, "Ollie Naturals Solid Ground" is what she would suggest. Now, what is it? It's a flax, probably. Oh. I think. Oh, and yeah, I give them tons and tons of um, omegas, like fish and and. Uh, is she still? Is she still typing? Yeah, she said there's really nice research on regeneration of eye tissues, even in cataracts, with that product. Oh, cool! Super antioxidant. Where Where do you find it? She's in. She. I'm in, just gonna Google it right now. Sweet. I think yeah, she's she out is. west too. Huh. Yep. She's Can a vet or, the link in or? The no, she's a, she, she produces a product called Ollie's Naturals. Oh, okay. And she's done yeah, a I would lot love of the name. Okay, she okay is, there it is. She is like, her, her flax is very, 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 very different though. She's, she's been doing tons of research on the lignin part of, of flax. So, um, yeah, if there's, if there is, um, if there's a, a way of, of, of doing that and you know and if Andrea could look at um the autoimmune perspective and the trauma perspective with with your dog I you know I don't know whether is, is he on the phytosflora not right now I ran out I just reordered okay um yeah. yeah and because there's there's so many homeopathics that are so great for the eyes too you know, I but I also definitely do the Ollie's. I mean, if Sarah said that there's research mm -hmm. about regeneration of eye tissue, that's that's incredible. That's huge. That's really, yeah, really huge. I, I, I also would, ordered the liver tonic as well. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good too. But yeah, did you ever have you ever done the leaky gut protocol? No, I, I haven't. So maybe okay. I because I would, I would think about doing that just because of the homeopathic in it too. There's a, there's a remedy in it called thiocyanium and a lot of, when, when, when they get a lot of eye damage there, they can get a lot of sclerotic tissue, which is hardening. Like, so you've heard of like liver sclerosis and, yeah. and things like that, where, where the tissue becomes hard, the, the remedies that are in there, um, really, really help with that sclerotic effect, you know, along with trying to deal with like the, the, the leaky gut part aspect of it. And if he's doing reverse sneezing, it's interesting now and then, because remember I was saying about post nasal. So eyes, nose and throat. I mean, we all know we have human specialists that deal with right. eyes, nose and throat. They're completely totally related right mm -hmm. it's the, it's the yeah. same function so if there's something going on in his sinuses and it's affecting his eyes and then he's getting reverse sneezing there could be there could gut soothe is really really awesome for that so i would do the i would actually probably do the leaky the leaky gut protocol so i just go on your website and it's all there yeah. that I need to find. Okay. Yeah. And I would definitely do the one that Sarah just said, the always natural. And I would contact Andrea because, you know, automatically I'm thinking of two remedies for him I, that I would put him on. But maybe, maybe Andrea could, could talk to you even 
I don't know. She's probably shaking her head. It, is, it, are you able to give me her? Um, or should I give you my contacts since she can contact Here I me? give Andrea's website. I don't know. Ask her if she's still home. I can give you my contacts. <laughs> Andrea's there. Hey, awesome. I, I can. Okay. I won't get all That's flustered oh, this I, time. It's only it's because I'm, I'm, um, <laughs> I put her, I put her in a spot. <laughs> Sorry, Andrea, she'll kill me later. But... I am forever grateful. <laughs> well, that's a young dog to have all that stuff yeah. going on. Awesome, yeah, he, he really is. And he's just the sweetest little guy. But he's he's becoming really dependent on us because yeah. and, and actually and actually he's um he's getting a little aggressive. And well, I'm... yeah, probably because he can't see. And if his eyes feel like that, it can be really painful. Grumpy. Yeah, it's in the evenings when he gets grumpy. Yeah, yeah. yeah his eyes probably hurt. Uh, did they tell you just to put plain lube in his eye, like tons and tons and he tons? He tried that. Yeah, I've tried just about every darn and thing. And it doesn't help before he goes to bed? <laughs> He'll have some, some good days, some good days, but mostly bad. Like the other day we were walking and he ran right into a tree and yelped Shoot. and cried and cried. And I ended up packing him because he was... And then it was it was after that that blue started. So I'm wondering. Yeah, that's why I was saying about the sclerotic thing. You, you know, it doesn't hurt to go and see a vet. I would do kind of everything. Yeah, I'll call yours and I'll go to the one. In yeah, the and, and I still yeah. would put lube in his eyes. Even if you don't think it's working, it may not be working to prevent or make them, make them um, to stop the progression but it'll help him feel like he doesn't have sand in his eyes. It, it'll, it'll help with the pain. Okay. So just when he's sitting there every, closing. Every, if he starts to squint, just, just go and get the lube. human. The lube, just put tons of lube in his eyes. Oh, he's going to hate me. He runs and hides I know, the coach. but you know what? Maybe he'll eventually realize that it feels better after you put it in. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Lots of treats. Well, yeah. Lots of treats. Yeah. Well, good luck. <laughs> I have to watch his weight because of that for sure. Oh, thank you so much. This You're is fantastic. welcome. Thanks, Shelly. Uh, Julie, this is a super good question from Connie, and you get it all the time. We answer this all the time. Okay. Um, so Connie is a holistic practitioner. She carries our products in her office. She's working with pets with allergies and the biggest complaint is that they're itching so badly and the pet owner wants to do something more immediate like Apoquil or Cytopoint. Do you have a specific supplement to recommend? I often recommend cortisin or bromelain aside yeah. from your yeasty beast protocol. Yeah. What can I do to help these people relieve their animals of their itching? I'll give you the mic here, Connie. Uh, Andrea and Sarah Griffith that was just on here we mm -hmm. just we've been having conversations about this because we need like we need 200 people that you that does homeopathy like the three of us to do <laughs> um, because there are so many homeopathic remedies that you can give to help um, sort of with the immediacy of of mitigating a little bit of those uh, well sometimes a lot but mitigating the, the symptoms while the, the gut's healing or while the immune system is starting to, you know, go back into homeostasis or whatever, whatever you're using. But, you know, there's a, there's a lot of, of homeopathic remedies that you can support them with as well. And, you know, I always just say like, you know, with, with our go-to, because it's just, it's almost like trying to get them to break the cycle of, of, of itching because they start to itch and then their cortisol levels go up and, and then they get super stressed and they get hot and then they get itchier again. And it's just this terrible, vicious cycle. So, you know, there is, there, there are lots of remedies that you can use and, and um, um, yeah, quercetin is really good. And so is, um, so is bromelain that they're both really good. Sometimes zinc, is good, uh, but it's that's what's so great about homeopathy is because it's 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 such a it's a, such an incredible adjunct. It's 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 a it's a modality in its own right that does incredible things. But even when you're using, that's why all my protocols have homeopathic remedies in them because I feel like they need the extra support until they 
until the body can heals can heal. But it's tough. Did you you're on the mic now? Did you want to ask me something else or? Um, yeah, I'm not familiar as familiar with your go to you had mentioned that. Um, would you maybe recommend that first as an option? Uh, you know, a lot of the clients that I see um, maybe have found out about certain side effects and, and potential dangers with, um, you know, some of these allergy medications that are being prescribed. And uh, of course, they come and see you know, somebody in the holistic field last instead of first. Um, and they're used to that immediate or that close to immediate um, effect and relief for their pet. Um, I know. And when I explain that we're doing an elimination diet, and we're going to, you know, try to do as many things as we can for the gut and to, and to remove things that could be contributing to yeast uh, and explain to them, sometimes it can get worse before it gets better. You know, I, I prepare them for that and, and the yeast dying off. Um, but often, you know, I have people that in between the initial consultation and a follow-up found out that they grabbed that Apoquil again or went back and got a Cytopoint injection. And so, you know, we're taking two steps back again. Um, so what Stephanie and I were just talking about that before we got on and or no, I was talking to Sarah about it before we got on. And I think that <clears throat> unfortunately, um, animals that have been super, 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 this is just my opinion and what I've experienced at my clinic, animals that have been super suppressed, um, there's, there's many times, like I have a different approach to to Apoquil and the Nectal P and steroids and things like that, because there there's some per, there's precise ways of taking them off that. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, weaning them off really slowly is important, but from my perspective, when they have that much suppressant suppression, they need to be weaned off even slower, even slower than what a vet will recommend. Okay. Like, almost to the point of looking at um, micro dosing them okay. with it, mm -hmm. where, where you would have to work with the vet and say like, you know, can we, can we, can we actually, instead of, you know, taking them off in the course of 10 days or a course of two weeks, can we take, can we, can we wean them even slower, like over the course of two months? Okay. So if people are going to choose something try to beg them not to choose the injection yes. because you can't, you can't do that, mm -hmm. but it's, it, it's very, very interesting. I've seen so many animals and I've had this conversation with Andrea and well, Sarah, they were in my clinic. So they, they've seen it a million times where um, animals that have been so suppressed or have so much chronic disease and chronic damage that, that, sometimes they have to stay on steroids for the rest of their life, but the amount that they're on from, you know, and if you ask a veterinarian or a pharmacist, they would say that they're, they're on, there's no therapeutic value to the amount they're on. So, you know, instead of them being on 10 milligrams or five milligrams twice a day, or even whatever, sometimes they're on like 0.5 or 1.5, like, like minuscule amounts that and you're still you're still giving them all of the amazing food and you're giving them all of the their probiotics and you're you're working with them as if they weren't on anything and they do amazing and you you know you, you check their blood work all the time and the, the steroids not affecting their liver and they're they're thriving and there's no signs of any kind of you know disease anymore but you take them off that 0.5 or you take them off that 1.5 and they, they blow up again. And, and, and I, when I, when I think about it, I think, I think it's, it could possibly be because they're spayed and neutered. So they don't have the, the hormones so that they, they need some kind of a, of a sort of a constant low micro dose of a steroid just because they're, they're so, um, uh, compromise for not having their sex hormones. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know why, but for me, I would rather a dog live a healthy, vibrant life on a teeny, teeny amount 
of a drug, like a, of, a, of, of a steroid or something while you're supporting their liver, while you're doing, because there's, there's so many times. And I mean, it's whole, the whole reason why I started Adored Beast was because of skin disease, mm-hmm. because I've seen, I've seen thousands, thousands of animals where, where people just can't, can't live with it. Right. They just can't watch their dog suffer. Yeah. And, and I, I am totally one of those people. Like it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's like watching the love of your life suffer, like, like self abuse themselves, Mm -hmm. right. Like start to, 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 um, self mutilate. Yes. And when you're at that point, I think we're past that point of realistically going, we can take them off the drugs and, and they're going to be okay because the amount of suppression that they have, that rebound effect, it's not even that they go back to where they were. They don't, they go back to 10 times worse than what they were. Yes, exactly. Here, no, if they're, if, if this is healthy and normal, um, or, or let's say this is, this is not, no, not itchy at all or no skin disease at all. And they, they go to here, let's say. So their skin disease is 25%. They go to the vets, it goes back down to, to zero, right? But mm-hmm. then as soon as that that tape, I call it like the 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 duct tape that's 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 covering up the pipe that's got the hole in it, spraying out water, you you put it, you're you're pushing it down, you're seeing no symptoms whatsoever. As soon as that drug stops or that tape comes off, you have a full blown rebound effect Mm -hmm. so it it goes exponentially worse than its original organic disease so now you've got like a drug you've got a drug overlay on it so that so the disease is just is even more than it was initially so sometimes those dogs are back and forth in smaller smaller amounts and it just takes a longer time to get them off it could take two years to get them off you know, they, they're going on smaller amounts, but I think to catch that, don't let them get that bad. Don't, don't let them get to that point of, of massively suffering, especially when they've been on it for a long period of time to see if there's any way you can work with the vets to take them off of it, but take them off of it slower. So that, so basically what you're doing is you've got the you've got the drugs here you're putting in all your you know your tools for holistic care and you're building up its body right Mm -hmm. and then you're taking down then you take down the drugs a bit and then you build them up a little bit more and then you bring down the drug a bit and then you bring build them up so that eventually the health perspective part of it over like surpasses this part of it and then you can just take the drugs right out, right out. But sometimes that happens. Not always. Don't always have to do it that way. But the, the really, really severe ones where, where you're banging your head against the wall because they do, they are going and, and going and then putting it being put. It's worse for them to go, get the drugs, go off the drugs, then go back on the drugs, then go off the drugs and go back on the drugs than it is to have a, a, a longer term health plan where you're really supporting the dog's body from the side effects of the drugs, right? So that you're really taking care of the kidneys, you're really taking care of the liver, you're really taking care of the, the, all of the, um, you know, the microbiome, you're, you're, it's like you're, you're trying to really balance and create some homeostasis, even when you've got this drug on on board and then eventually the goal is to take the take them right off the drug and if you you know it if you can't take them off fully they're still going to have a better quality life they're going to have a longer life because they aren't going to be on these high doses these really really severe high doses Mm -hmm. and they're just going to have a happier life and the people will start to calm down which is a big thing because if the people start to see the the animal not suffering right and that everybody's working together more as a team 
they'll tend to hang on a little longer. Mm-hmm. They'll their whole energy calms down because they're they're happy for their animal. They're less stressed, and then that whole stress loop that's happening in the home will decrease, right? And mm-hmm. that that can help everybody. That can help the healing the healing part of that journey a lot. So I I I don't like drugs. Like I don't. I'm I'm very lucky. I don't have, I mean, I have 40 animals and I only have two of them that have to be on drugs and um, they're on, they're on minuscule amounts and they're on everything else to try and, to try and um, alleviate the side effects. Basically, that's all you do is you, you look at what that drug does and then you, you just pump in whatever you have to help with the, the length of the time that, 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 that body can compensate on that drug. Because if you don't do that, then, then sometimes you just, you just lose them as clients and then they just go fully back conventional or, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a real, it's a, it's a way game. Makes sense. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks, Connie. You know what, Julie, just to piggyback off that, it's a, it's one thing that a lot of us pet parents, when something goes wrong, it's hard to find the patience to wait and, and let the, the natural medicine take its course. And it's something I know I personally struggle with and a lot of us attendees, it, it's, it's very difficult to find the patience to wait and let it do its course and do its job. But sometimes, sometimes that's not, I mean, I agree. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. Like I lose my, I lose it when it's my animals. (laughs) Like I can't, I can't, I can't stand watching my animals suffer for one second. Like I'm, I'm brutal. I'm probably worse than everybody out there watching this. And, um, but I also, um, you know, my clinic was a was based on Samuel Hahnemann and his philosophy of of um, above all, do no harm. So, you know, watching your dog detoxify. A lot of people don't know what's detoxifying and what. Am I muted? No. No. Okay, I don't know why that makes me sad. Um, a lot of a lot of people don't understand. The difference between detoxification and the animal's body just getting worse or rebound effect because there's there's a lot of differences between it there's the rebound of coming off the drug and then then getting way worse there's which is sort of like a detoxification where the body detoxes and then there's that part where it's like actually they're not detoxing they're getting worse and yeah. sometimes if a detox goes on too long and it's too severe the body becomes compromised and then the disease does get worse. It actually does get worse. Right. So, so nothing in my opinion should be suffering and you should be working with someone that can help your help alleviate. That's why Andrea and Sarah are, are so booked, right? Because they Mm -hmm. have the same philosophy as I do where, where you don't want your animals to suffer. I don't care whether they're on holistic medicine or they're on conventional medicine. You don't, you don't want them to suffer. So I don't subscribe to watching your animals suffer, but that's, that's, you know, because they're, they need to stay off drugs and they need to um, detox. Saying that it doesn't, it's not, um, You've got to you've got to weigh what's suffering, and just moving through, right? So moving through something is they might like they might get bouts of things, right? Like they might be doing really great, but then they'll have a bout of something, and instead of going, oh, let's go back to the holistic vet or call my homeopath or call my whoever my my the person that's working with my animal they freak out. Oh my God, it, you know, now this is happening. I got to take them to the vets and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Rather than trying to stay the course with, you know, deal with the situation at hand more holistically, that's when it puts them backwards, right? 
but but no animal should be in chronic suffering all the time just because they're you know they're detoxifying if you're working with a really good homeopath or you're working with a really good holistic practitioner whether it's a vet or or someone that's just really qualified in their in their field um an animal shouldn't be in a chronic state of suffering that's my opinion awesome julie thank you for taking the time to to hang out with us tonight and answer questions and teach us about allergies and especially at the end here you know it's really important to what you just said just to understand that we can help our animals but it takes tools and it takes a team and it takes a community and it takes time mm -hmm. so thank you everyone. Take time. yeah you thank know you. It, take, it takes time and it takes i think the big thing is is you have to be your advocate mm -hmm. so i was talking to sarah today about some stuff and you you want to respect your vet but your vet needs to respect you as much as you respect your vet so everybody should be working together for the greater good of your animal and if you need to have drugs or you need to have blood work or you need to have diagnostics or you need to what have whatever you you get that done but then you need to be your you need to be navigating the ship in saying well you know, I need, I want you to work with my homeopath or I want you to work with my nutritionist or I want you to work with this so that, so that you're not throwing, my mom would say, you don't throw the baby out with bath water, right? Like you don't just jump from one ship to the next. You, 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 you meld everything together for, um, for, for the long-term greater good of that body, whether it's a person, a dog, a cat, a pig, it doesn't matter it, it, it really isn't, um, especially with allergies. I mean, allergies can, like I said, the whole reason that I got into allergies was that it was, it was, I was shocked to know that it was the number one reason for elected euthanasia. So that just goes to show how stressed out people are. So you, you have to create a gentle approach, be really clear, work with someone that knows what they're talking about, and um, be your animal's advocate to making sure that they're in that balance of, of not suffering, right? Where, where it's, you know, months and months and months of them getting worse. I mean, you know, a few days of them getting worse, a week of them getting worse. I mean, that's sometimes you've got to bite the bullet and do stuff for sure. But you know, there's, there's ways of alleviating that, that stress. And sometimes, you know, sometimes stuff isn't always perfect. Sometimes you have to do, you have to do drugs with them, but you sometimes only have to use minimal amounts of drugs that, that won't affect the longevity or the, the quality of life. It actually enhances the quality of life, but there's not a lot of vets that'll work like that. So you've got to find a vet that's open to understanding that. Yeah, I like the part where you said like working as a team, being willing to say why or ask tough questions or like you said, we're just- Or literally say, if you're not going to work with me as a team, I'm going to a different clinic. So be it. Yeah. yeah. I'll, find a, I'll find someone that will work with me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not yeah. like I, I'm working against you. I want to work with you. Yeah. You know, we want, I want to work as a team with my dog. I don't want to put my dogs, you know, not, not because I don't respect you, not because I don't think that you have amazing education and have devoted your life to becoming a vet. It's got nothing to do with that. It's got to do with choice that there's a lot of new stuff out there. There's a lot of new research supporting, you know, integrative veterinary medicine, and that's the route you want to take. And if you, they can't take that integrative approach with you, you'll have to find someone that does yeah absolutely thank you julie so yeah, much this um, session was so educational really really helpful for everyone thank you everyone for joining us as well we appreciate you being can you, here before you go so, yeah possible to find a holistic what vet we're we're oh I just want to yeah 100 percent. if you need um, a holistic vet we have the list not, we have a list and like katie kangas is taking phone consultations yeah. she's incredible 
Um, there are, we have a list of holistic vets that do phone consultations that will work with your vet. So, you know, you can put that in the chat or get on our, on our, yeah. wherever, well, I don't uh, even know where we post them. <laughs> Sorry. Well, you can email us. No, hundred percent. We do have a list. There's homeopaths on there, nutritionists, holistic veterinarians, and they, they work worldwide. They, like Julie said, they take phone consults and video yeah. consults. Yep. Email so us. Strong in England. Yes. Um, impossible to find a holistic vet in Montreal. If you know one, I don't know one, but, but you can find, like I said, you can find holistic vets that do telephone consultations or licensed veterinarians that, you know, you should be able to have your vet talk to them. Like, if a vet won't talk to another vet, there's something really wrong. And I would like run out of that clinic. Like if a vet's not going to talk to another veterinarian, that's, that's just not, that's just not working for the greater good of your animal. So I would be finding another vet that would. Mm -hmm. So just to round it out, if you need the list, if you need, uh, if your question wasn't answered and you want to chat with us, email us questions, it's plural questions with an S at adoredbeast.com. And we would be glad to send you some resources and get you and your animal back on track. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. Thank you, Julie. You're welcome. Good night, everyone. Bye, everybody.